So is the goal of this framework the same as the uh, fitness framework to make it so non-technical people can create tests? Who is your target audience? Um, yes, one of the original goals was to make it so that non-technical people could create tests. One of the things that I see in my consulting practice is that that goal, although laudable and achievable on a certain level, is... Uh, I don't know who said it, but over here, somebody said something about the real value being the communication between the technical people and the non-technical people and get everybody in a room. And so it's not so that you can get somebody who doesn't know anything about technology and say, here, go forth and automate. Um, it's instead to provide a collaborative environment. I'm seeing that be a much bigger advantage. And so one of the things I should mention about this is what I showed you was essentially like uh, refactoring into something that was a domain specific language. You can also use this tool, and for that matter, fitness as well, to instead do acceptance test driven development where you express the expectations in advance of the software even being written and then implement the automation that's going to make those keywords work during development. And I consider that to be part of the development team's responsibility as opposed to some isolated tester shoved off in a corner. Did that actually answer your question? Um, so you're, you're saying that this would be used for by both uh, all three levels, that is non-technical testers as well as development? Yes. I'm skeptical. That's okay. I only work with organizations that are committed to testing and have developers who actually believe testing has value. Well, as opposed to like JUnit or um, RSpec or, or something like Those that. Those are our unit testing frameworks and I would never use, I would never recommend using any kind of acceptance level test automation framework, whether fitness or this one, as a substitute for JSpec or RSpec. And how would you compare this to Cucumber? So I would say this is very analogous to Cucumber, and it's so much fun watching these frameworks ratchet off of each other. So this had the table syntax before Cucumber got the table <laughs> syntax, and that, or maybe, wait, no, this had the HTML, which I'm showing up on the screen now, and Cucumber had the flat text, so then this one got the flat text, and Cucumber said, oh, that one was really cool. I don't know if it was Aslak or who implemented the, the um, tables within the tag. It's, anyway, they just, the, the features are ratcheting up, and I think it's the most awesome thing. Um, but the biggest difference is that with Cucumber, you're going to be writing your test steps in Ruby. And here, although they do have an XML RPC bridge that you theoretically could use to write your stuff in Ruby, um, really it's intended to have your, your libraries written in Python or in Java. Uh, another advantage for Cucumber. Yeah, if you're in a Ruby environment, then I would totally go with Cucumber. I actually had a room full of uh, developers led by somebody that was really wanting to do RSpec um, and, and really, really pushing for me to let them do RSpec a couple of days ago. And part of the discussion came down to how likely is it that that type of syntax, uh, a higher, what I would consider just like a higher level, you know, constructed syntax like what you have here, RSpec, <coughs> these others that we're talking about, um, <coughs> how likely did we feel in our organization that we were to get like, you know, product owners, product managers, to, to actually want to sit down and even write that stuff. Um, so, you know, obviously, like in this room, we're all looking at this going, ah, oh, piece of cake, they should be able to do it. You've done this, can, can you give us your experience? Like, how, how many clients have an easy time? How many have a hard time? Does that fall to QA? Does that really go to, to POs and PMs? Um, comments? Yeah, actually, let me show you an example of the this, this same kind of test done in RSpec so that we've got something that we can point at because I happen to have that handy somewhere here, here, really, here. Um, I've got a little uh, open source project up on GitHub that shows a bunch of these triangle tests in three different frameworks right now, Cucumber, RSpec, and robot framework. Um, it's under my username on GitHub is E H E N D R I. 
Yes, I think I can still spell my name. Right. So E-H-E-N-D-R-I, and I've got a bunch of projects up there. And one of them is this triangle sampler thing. Um, and so if we look at RSpec, this is the same kind of test expressed in RSpec. It's got code in it. And so when you so yeah. talk about product owners writing these tests, I've never seen that happen. I didn't, I didn't believe it myself. I was kind of basically trying to shut these guys down. When I see yours, I see it as <coughs> closer to plausible, but um, wait, again, you I, mean I'm this? Just, no, no, no. When I when, when I see your robot higher, framework, your, yeah. When I see yeah. your higher level syntax, it looks more likely for that kind of person to handle. But I'm just wondering where you have. I understand you do consultancy. Right. Where you've implemented this? Um, <coughs> after all was said and done, who wound up actually writing the higher level stuff? Was it? less technical QA, was it truly uh, product managers and non-technical people? Who wound up writing that stuff on average? I've seen it be a mix, and I think that's when it's the most successful. Because let's face it, if we've got people who, have, who are product owners and people who have QA backgrounds, no matter what their titles are within an agile organization, and developers, those are three very important perspectives on the behavior of the system, and everybody's got expectations that are important to articulate. And so I have seen it be a mix in environments where they've adopted something that is uh, like fitness or, or um, robot framework where you can express it in English. Um, and in the most successful environments, they've used it as a collaborative tool where they will capture the acceptance criteria during the story discussion. Um, as opposed to having anybody go off and try to scribe the acceptance tests later um, because that just leads to the problem where you've got two sources of expectations, whoever's writing the tests and whoever's writing the requirements. And so I think that these tools for the first time in our industry's history give us a collaborative platform where we can actually capture the concrete expectations in a way that is actually leverageable and usable as we w move through the, the um, project. Really so nice yes, insight. Thank you. Work. Thanks. Hey, um, would you recommend using uh, robot as a kind of means to create um, a technical design document? Um, so, like, not necessarily the higher level, like you know, like obviously in agile, you're not going to have very much documentation in general, but um, I think since you did mention it's kind of a mix of, of like the product people and the technical people, you know, having this dialogue and creating this together, um, I think it's kind of cool because it kind of reminds me of, you know, back when they had like compilable, compilable specifications. Like this is almost like the same thing just with acceptance testing in a kind of higher level way. Um, and I like the idea of being able to define the grammar later. Um, but have you? experienced or seen success with using this as a means for creating a specification? Would you recommend doing that? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a whole bunch been, that's been written over the last few years about acceptance test-driven development. And some people also call it story testing. And some of the behavior development community, driven development community have gotten into this as well. Yes, I've seen it. I would recommend um, uh, Goiko Adzik's book, Bridging the Communication Gap. Fabulous book on how to make it really work. And yes, Robot Framework is designed to be able to facilitate that kind of, of what you're talking about. Cool. Cool. Well, listen, thank you very much. That's great. Thanks.